Hey, what's going on, Savages? You already know who it is. It's your boy, Mikey Savage 21, a.k.a. the swelliest Mac Daddy on the face of the planet, bringing you another segment of Testify Talk. What? I know, right? Bringing you another segment of Testify Talks. The segment where I literally spotlight and talk about any and everything. And today, myself and my guest, if you haven't already heard, my man, Andy13, <laughs> we're going to be talking about video game adaptations to film, why they haven't been working. We'll discuss what we think our top three video game movies are, and then we'll hopefully offer up some solutions in this video. So with that being said, jump into the video. All right. So I want to start discussing off with this statement and I basically feel like we have not had a f really good video game adaptation in a very long time. And we're talking about ones that went to theater, uh, both, you know, here in the States and over overseas. So internationally, basically, we're not talking about um, films that went direct to DVD or that went to Netflix or anything. We're talking about movies that actually saw theater plays. And the first one we got really was in 1993 with the Super Mario Bros. Everybody remembers the infamous movie with John Leguizamo and Bob Ashes. <laughs> and I mean, it was basically them being in a comedy sketch. And then it was set in a Mario world. It had nothing absolutely to do with the video game. And then, of course, we had Double Dragon. Uh, we had Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Um, Pokemon, yes, is included on this list as well because a lot of them did go to theaters. Um, we got House of the Dead. We have the Resident Evil franchise. Uh, the Lara Croft Tomb Raider films. Blood Rain, Silent Hill. Um, let's see, Dead or Alive. Uh, Doom, Far Cry, Max Payne. The Prince of Persia movie. Um, Need for Speed, uh, the Hitman movies, Ratchet and Clank, the Angry Birds movie, Warcraft, Assassin's Creed. All of these movies basically were really popular video game at one point or another. That made terrible movies. I'm just going to go throw that out there. That made terrible yeah, movies. Some of them made terrible movies. Some of them could have been approved upon if they would have just focused on certain things more. And yes, we are again going to break down what we think the worst are. And then again, we're going to give our list as well. But mainly, I just want to have a discussion with Andy 13. We're just going to basically talk about why they haven't been working lately and what what's, you know, the problem. I mean, me personally, again, uh, directing a film and just making a film in general is hard. Anybody who tells you that making films is easy, they're telling you a story. It is a long, hard, drawn out process. Not everybody can do it. Not everybody is able to to make a hit successful film but i feel like with video game properties it should be easier because you don't really have to think much yeah it, a little bit easier I, I would i would agree with that saying yes it ha it's a little bit easier because again you have something to base it off of as opposed to like a book where you just have no visual representation you have words on a page with a video game you actually have something animated in front of your face but at the same time i get that directors are like well the video game we want to add it want to basically turn it uh adapt the video game we basically want to adapt is basically too short like resident evil yeah their first original video game was like really really short and it was straight and short to the point i mean there wasn't much to it uh, so, of course, when they made a movie about it, you have to stretch certain things out. Same thing with some of the other th movies like Street Fighter and Prince of Persia. Those films aren't necessarily long in the video game format, so they don't take as long. So they have to put in like unnecessary padding. And you want to have a full-length movie. You want people to feel like they're getting their money's worth. You don't want them to sit in there for 45 minutes and be like, Oh, I just paid $25. I'll see 45 minutes worth of a movie. Oh, that's awesome. You want to have it at least go from anywhere from an hour to maybe an hour and a half maybe if you have really locked your audience in maybe two hours but for the sake of argument let's just say that again as a society we've kind of been spoiled a little bit when it comes to certain film franchises and again um you have certain properties like everyone talks about star wars everyone talks about marvel and dc and you know how again they have physical physical res ugh. They have physical representation with their comic books and whatnot, um, and with some of their novels as well that has uh, pictures included in it. 
And so video games have a little hard time adapting it. And so that's why I give a little leeway to directors or to a studio who wants to sit here basically and wants to do a video game adaptation because it's hard. So I give them a little bit of a pass. So Andy13, what do you think about this, man? What are your thoughts on it? Uh, well, considering the cringeworthy movies I've seen adapted from video games and the non-cringeworthy ones, like we'll just take a prime example. The first Mortal Kombat, Not Annihilation, was not completely 100% terrible. Right, it wasn't. Oh my god, people are going to hang me for this. Jesus. <sighs> I'm speaking to the words right now. No, I, look, I feel you. I, I would defend your point on on Mortal Kombat. Really? And looking at the films right here, um, the first again film, we have a Super Mario Bros. Then it was Double Dragon and Street Fighter. Before that, all those movies were crap, you know. I mean, they made a good significant amount of money in the box office for the most part, especially looking at Street Fighter. It made apparently $99 million, um, uh worldwide, so that's awesome. But Mortal Kombat is where it really comes into play, and this movie made $122 uh, million worldwide, and it has a very, very high score on Rotten Tomatoes. I look, and Mortal Kombat, Resident Evil and final fantasy uh the spirits within are the only films that have higher than a 30 percent everything else is below 30 percent basically for rotten tomatoes and for those of you who are not familiar with rotten tomatoes or what rotten tomatoes is it's basically an aggregator site where they take the scores of other film reviewers who have reviewed the film and they basically give you a letter grade uh, and if it's anything above a 50, it's considered fresh. Anything below a 50, it's rotten. And actually, I have to rectify myself. Dead or Alive also uh, has a 34%. So that's actually kind of high as well. Uh, but no, I, I feel you, uh, what you were talking about, Mortal Kombat. I do feel like Mortal Kombat was the first video game adaptation that we got that was really good. It's just a shame the sequel was just so horrible. Yeah, my views on the whole situation are like this. Video games should be easier to adapt than what they're making it seem. If you think about it, a comic book, like, bringing a comic book character to life is difficult. But most video games nowadays rely on motion capture technology. Like the Assassin's Creed games, that's an actual person in a motion technology suit. Like, for example, we had a Remy Malik uh, who did motion capture for the film... Like, for example, Remy Malik, who has been in, like, movies and who has been in TV series, and he did motion capture for the video game Until Dawn. Well, so did Hayden Petrie. Uh, I think I'm saying her name. Hayden Petrie? Something like that. Uh, she also did motion capture for that game. We had several other well-known actors do motion capture for the game Until Dawn. And I actually think Until Dawn would actually make a really cool concept as a movie. Just kind of throwing that out there. But uh, you were saying, Andy13? You would think it'd be easier just because of the simple fact most of it is motion capture. You get to see the character move like you were saying. With a comic book, you don't really get to see the movies, you don't really get to see the characters, so you have a bit of a harder time pulling them onto the screen with the costumes. And some of them are just so outlandish, it's impossible to portray them as they are in the comic book. But you get a video game. Like, say, mm, if they were to adapt Infamous. It's fairly simple, fairly good, it's got a good storyline. You think, okay, that's going to be easy. Or you think, like, let's just take a real-life example for a second, Assassin's Creed. 98% of Assassin's Creed is motion capture. The movements, the actions, the fighting, everything. And they've got this perfect slate laid out for them. They could have picked and plucked different parts from the games. All of them together. Different attributes from the different protagonists to throw into this completely new storyline. And what do they do? They mucked it up. Completely botched the whole thing, changed the animus entirely, and just and, messed everything up. So what it's I've easier than they're making it look, but I'm not going to say it's easy. Right, it's right. Not, it's not easy to make a movie, but it's easier than they're making it out to be. And from what I've heard, because I personally did not uh, get a chance to catch Assassin's Creed when it came out in December, 
But from what I heard from other reviewers and other credible sources, they said that Mortal Kombat, they said that it had the potential to be a truly great video game adaptation, basically. It had the opportunity to be a great video game adaptation, but what happened is it fell to the wayside, unfortunately. Simply yes, because of the stuff that happened in the present. If they would have focused more on the stuff of him going into the past, and again, it's just minor spoiler so we're not gonna like spoil the movie for you or anything but he goes into the past to figure out this little scenario or to basically to figure out who is his ancestor and all this what basically they have him go into the past and fix certain things and interact with certain characters that's the best way i can put it without spoiling anything like major basically but they botched that up and i think they botched that up because again from what i've heard is they said they would have stuck more to things from the past it wouldn't have been as bad but they tried to focus more on stuff in the here and the now and the present as opposed to michael fassbender who you brought in to do this motion capture and everything to have him go in and actually do these stunts and, and learn to do all these acrobatics and have all these amazing set pieces and everything and have a good onslaught cast of supporting actors who are basically underutilized in their film simply basically because you wanted to focus more on visuals and the stuff that's going on here because you felt that you couldn't make a good movie set in the past when we have seen clearly movies can move into the past but then bring it into the present as well and still succeed. Deadpool is a great example of that. We had it basically like Greg Nicotero does for most of his Walking Dead episodes. We start with something that has happened in the past or something that's happened in the present and then we jump into the past and then it's told out of sequence but once you get to the end of the movie it all is put together very nicely and they could have did that it, with Assassin's Creed but they didn't I mean it leads up to it shows you the steps that lead up to it the course but they yeah like you said did do that but no I I honestly I again I'm like you I give them a pass um, but for me, I feel like it should not be as hard. Like, we're, for example, we're going to talk about some of, some of the movies. I guess we'll talk about the ones that have higher ratings. We kind of already touched on Street Fighter. So let's kind of look at the first Resident Evil. Me personally, I thought the first Resident Evil film was good. I thought it was really horrific. I thought it had lots of tension. I cared about some of the characters. I mean, again, you had this group of military people coming in. and You know they were going to get taken out quickly. But still, on top of that, it wasn't so bad. It really wasn't so bad. I mean, they had a lot going for it. As opposed to something like House of Dead, which completely botched everything from the video game and the movie itself and tried to do something different, which I applaud any filmmaker for doing. But they did it in a way that it was just basically crap. Same thing with Doom and Silent Hill and some of these other films. But I felt like Resident Evil actually had the potential to be something great. Resident Evil itself is good, but the rest of its sequels just got bad. And if you want to look at an example of a film that actually had great potential, and it's another one that I missed on our list, that actually has a higher score, is we have the Angry Birds movie, which you know came out last <laughs> year. It's got a 43%. And then Prince of Persia, the, the whitewash film, as people call it, has a 36%. I'm sorry, so, I, I still mean, have to laugh at the Angry Birds movie. That is just hilarious every time I hear it. Because it started off as a stupid app to occupy children. <laughs> and now it's become this multi-billion dollar franchise that has movies, toys, vi more video games. And we're probably going to get another movie, most likely. So, Angry Birds Star Wars. <laughs> oh, gosh. My goodness I, gracious. I, I, I would go ahead and sue Disney now. Please, George Lucas, do it before it gets too bad. But even for what I saw in the Angry Birds movie, it was a kid-friendly. It had a lot of laughs in there. It poked fun and had some adult jokes in there for adults. So it wasn't completely bad. Um, Prince of Persia, I thought the action pieces were really cool. I thought the visuals looked really cool. I think the main thing that hurt Prince of Persia besides 
the whitewashing and everything instead of them actually going out and finding Persian actors or at least Middle Eastern actors instead of like bringing all these white actors into it. I felt like that hurt it. The time placement that it came out hurt it as well because again it came out in May. Everyone knows it's summer big blockbuster summer movies come out in May. Maybe this film should have tried to come out maybe in like I don't know, the end of August, maybe September would have did better there. But then also on top of that, I found another thing that hurt it is we really didn't get an explanation of what makes the Prince of Persia the Prince of Persia. Because it's called the Sands of Time. We have a brief understanding of what it means to time travel, but they didn't really heavily explain it in the film. They just kind of throw you in it and expect you to be a player of the video games where it's supposed to be you need to be able to reach people who are not only players of the video games, but also reach the outside demographic who do not play video games. It's the same thing with There's comic book films. Difference. Not everybody knows about these comic book characters and knows about these stories and what's going to happen at the end of the films. So you also have to bring in not only the comic book sweaties, but you also have to bring in the general audience as well. Because again, if just because it's just like Batman v Superman. You have a lot of fans who gave that movie a pass, but then you have a lot of casual fans who did not understand it. They were just like, what is this? This makes absolutely no sense. But you had comic book fans who kept defending it and defending it, saying that it is a good movie. It is a good movie, yada, yada, and giving all these excuses when all they had to do was take a step back and just realize, hey, okay, not only are we trying to introduce too much, but also we need to be able to make sure our audience knows who our characters are. Everybody knows who Batman and Superman are, but you throw Wonder Woman in there. No one knows who Wonder Woman is that's outside of the comic book genre for the most part. Because when I went and saw an opening night, I had people scratching their heads, screaming out, Who is that? And I'm just like, that's Wonder Woman. Well, who is that guy in the convenience store? That's the Flash. Well, who is the guy that's got like the mother but looking the little box? Look at that. It's supposed to be Cyborg. See, they're supposed to have been able to introduce these characters in a way, in that, a way that everybody understand. would be able to understand it, not just the comic book sweaties, basically. Now, but well, uh, what were you saying on Andy 13? Well, the thing, it's kind of like it's the Wonder Woman thing, and also with going back to Prince of Persia. First off, great way to fix that movie. Just replace, was it Jake Gyllenhaal who played the lead role? Yeah, it was Jake Gyllenhaal. Okay, replace him with the guy who played the. Pr- yeah, the main character in Slumdog Millionaire. I can't rem- ever remember his name to save my life. Okay, or you could use the guy from uh, uh, John Carter. He would be a good fit, too. True. Um, but on to something like Batman v Superman, just to think about the comparison between comic books and video game movies. Something like that, like the introduction of Wonder Woman. She got like 45 seconds of introduction. Maybe. If she's lucky. And not not everybody, like the majority of us, which I don't know if you really did watch them, but I watched the Justice League series. Oh, yeah, I grew up with Justice League. I grew up with Superman animated series, Batman animated series, Batman Beyond, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man and His Friends. I grew up with all of that, all the old comic book TV shows that we had at one point or another. I even grew up with the original X-Men cartoon series and the spinoff where it was uh, Wolverine and the X-Men. I even grew up with that as well. And X-Men Unlimited. I still remember yeah. X-Men Unlimited and when they put that little dark tint on on it and it always felt like a darker form of X-Men cartoon. Evolution. X-Men Evolution. You're thinking of Justice League Unlimited. Oh, that's right. That's right. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Got, got a little mixed up. <laughs> but the main thing I'm thinking about it is because yeah, that show kind of gave Wonder Woman her time to shine. At the same time, she hasn't really had a huge introduction in it ever. So you're right about that one. And when they introduced her, it kind of felt like, even to some of the fans, I know to me, it felt like a direct slap in the face. Because it's like, hey, you know that character we've never really pulled out of our butts? Well, here she is. It's just kind of like, what? Why did you just throw this into a movie that should have been about Batman? Man and Superman. That's just dumb. Exactly. And I know, again, it's hard to make compare comic book films to video games, but at the same time, we're basically making the point of saying that 
people who do no not real. read the comic books and people who do not are not familiar with the video games you have to be able to bring them in to where they will understand the movie do you want to know why angry birds movie made a lot of money and it has a higher rating because the people who saw it and reviewed it understood the angry birds movie more so than they did the ratchet and clank movie or the need for speed movie or the tekken movie or even Max Payne, which I actually did enjoy Max Payne. I thought Mar Warburg was a uh, cool in that film. People do it. not understand this, so when you try to adapt these things, it's not gonna fly over if you're not able to explain it in a way. And that's one of the things I heard hurt Assassin's Creed was they didn't do a good explanation of what the animix is and how he jumps through time and they didn't focus on that time period because if I, again i heard that if they would have stuck in that past time period and focused less on the stuff going on in the present a lot more people would have been satisfied with that film and again same thing with the resident evil games the resident evil games had a hard time finally finding themselves and we finally got a good one this year with biohazard but they turned it more into action than in less about atmosphere and horror and so did the movies they became less horrific and scary in more action films point it point in case i saw the most recent film resident evil the final chapter i did a review on it it's on the channel Comparing that to the first one, it's completely different. I mean, okay, I mean, yes, you have bigger set pieces and everything, and this is not confined to one little space, but at the same time, Resident Evil had some genuine horrific moments in it. Resident Evil, the final chapter, did not. It barely had any jump scares in it, and it wasn't scary. I'll give that to the first Resident Evil, and even a little bit to the sequel, uh, of the original Resident Evil. At least it had some scares in there. Same thing with, you know, uh, Alone in the Dark. Doom had a couple of scares in there, but they basically went the route of Resident Evil and turned it more into an action-heavy movie as opposed to more about the the darkness and groom, gloominess of being in space and having this outbreak take place. Again, they basically just made a shot-by-shot -shot remake of Resident Evil and just slapped the Doom title on it. Same thing with Hitman. I enjoyed Hitman, but Hitman could have been a better film had they, you know, did a little bit more backstory about the Hitman, got into a couple of better actors as well, and had a better story set around it, like in the video game franchise. But no, man, uh, with that being said, guy, uh, Andy13, you have any more to add to this point? I just want to rag on Assassin's Creed for a second. I'm sorry, they didn't explain the Animus very well. They didn't explain that he goes back through his ancestors' memories banked away throughout his subconscious. They don't explain why it's going back to the front, well, to Spain. They don't explain anything about the Templars or the Assassins in detail. And dear God, they don't even explain what Abstergo industries is like uh well, that's hey, pretty much all i got but hey at least we have some movies to look forward to so i'm currently looking at the next couple of films we're going to be getting within the next couple of years um uh march 16 2018 we're supposed to be getting a tomb raider uh remake with alicia vikander um as the lead role of laura croft um, we're supposed to be getting a Rampage movie starring The Rock. Um, that's actually going to be kind of awesome. That's supposed to come out on April 20th, 2018. Um, also for 2018, we have an untitled Sonic the Hedgehog film. From what I understand, they wanted to do what they did basically with the Smurfs and make it live action, but then have CG characters within it. Uh, we got a Minecraft movie that's set for May 24th, 2019. And then some films that we do not have much about, but have, you know, obviously talked about. Uh, Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Uh, the long-awaited Five Night at Freddy's video game movie. Uh, and, of course, Dragon's Lair, the movie, and then Just Cause. Now, I gotta say, I'm actually looking forward to Rampage, Tomb Raider, and Five Nights at Freddy's because as someone who finally started playing the Five Nights at Freddy's games, those are really creepy, freaky games because, Andrew 13, you were on a couple of playthroughs with me on that game, and there were some genuine, terrifying moments. 
I could really yeah. see yeah. Warner Brothers doing something amazing with Five Nights at Freddy's. I really could. Watch it. They turn it into a kid's movie. I hope they don't because it's not a kid's game. Obviously, it's not a kid's game. Kids can play it, but it's not a kid's game. You let Pokemon Detective Pikachu worry about the kids, and you let Five Nights at Freddy's be more so for the teenagers and the adults. The people, Same thing with Sonic. People who I mean, I could see that going either people. way. They could go the darker route, or they could go the lighter, kid-friendly route. Either way, I mean, you know, as long as it's good, that's all that matters to me. Uh, again, Tomb Raider, Rampage, excited to see those. Um, but Andy 13, do any of these upcoming movies stand out to you, man? Besides the Tomb Raider one and the Rampage one, not really. I'm kind of just giving up on video game adaptations in movies. It's just... It's kind of a lost cause to me, but at the same time, I do hope these next ones are good. Well, I mean, at least the one thing we can say as uh, opposed to, you know, last year. Basically, like last year, we started to see a... A little bit of uh, up the they up the product they up the production budget of these films and they started to come out a lot more frequently and that some of them weren't as bad. Again, Angry Birds movie you know was pretty good. Warcraft movie I did not get a chance to see, which I actually do need to pick up on Blu-ray DVD here soon. But I heard overseas you know people were loving it and they were loving it. Uh, I never personally got into the Warcraft uh, games. Assassin's Creed I played a couple of the games, did not see the film. Um, Again, Resident Evil, you know, say what you will about that. But at least we're starting to see that these films are starting to make a little bit more money and they're starting to become a little bit more aware in the public eye of these video game properties. Um, but now getting to uh, the last part of this discussion I wanted to do is uh, I basically we, we basically talked about what we think they could do. Um, in terms of video game adaptations and how they can make them better, of course. Um, again, you, you need to borrow heavily from the video game. You need to get people who understand the video game. Don't just get a bunch of people who don't understand the video game. It's one thing to get an A-list director in here, but you need to have a superb writing team who understands the video game. But then you also do need some studio heads over them saying, okay, well, production-wise, we need to pull this back and pull this back. And then they can rebuttal and say, okay, well, we can cut this and cut this, but we do need to keep, keep this. And basically getting to the last part of the discussion, I just want to talk about basically our top three favorite video game adaptations. Now, we're not going to take into account the Rotten Tomato scores. We're basically just going to talk about our top three video game to film adaptations that we've gotten and i will go ahead and eliminate the ones we have not seen yet that are upcoming and the ones from last year so basically we'll do all the way from 2015 um, which we had the uh, hitman agent 47 and go to may 28th 1993 which was the super mario bros film all right so andy 13 what would your top three be uh, this one's difficult because I haven't actually thought about it until now. But if I had to say number one would still definitely be the first Pokemon movie. Like, that one just wins hands down every time. Okay. And, yeah. Number All two right. would probably be Mortal Kombat. And number three, just because it's like a guilty pleasure like one of those movies you don't admit you like to anyone whatsoever because they're just so freaking terrible i did kind of enjoy the super mario's brothers movie oh my goodness gracious <laughs> Lord, I just thought it, was, it was hilarious how bad they outdid the game and how like completely separate it was Ooh. it's just hilarious to me all right, guys, mine's not like going to be too, too strong. Do what now? How can you have that kind of grounding and come up with a, a movie like that? Beats me, man. It just it beats me. All right, well, for me, if I had to look at what my top three would be, of course, Mortal Kombat's going to be number one. Uh, number two, obviously, would be Resident Evil. Um, again, I love the first Resident Evil. I thought it was a good adaptation from the video game. And if I had to throw one in there that seems really obscure, and a lot of people might give me some flack for this because there are some films that are way better than this, 
I'm actually deadlocked between Hitman, Max Payne, and dare I say it, Silent Hill. Those to me are neck and neck, basically. Because I really got an enjoyment out of Max Payne. Because I had never played the video game. Never read any of the adaptations like the, the comics that they have. Never saw it. I saw the movie and I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was awesome at the time when I saw it. I saw it when I was a little younger. But now that I've had time to go back and rewatch it, I understand how horrible that movie is. But it was still pretty good. And I was like, I kind of want to see a Max Payne sequel. I kind of want to see Mark Wahlberg come back and play this iconic character again. Again with the Hitman film. Now I'm talking about the original first Hitman film that came out. I'm not talking about the uh, the rebooted title with Rupert Freen. Uh, I'm talking about the one that had uh, Tiffany uh, Timothy Oliphant basically uh, playing the uh, Hitman character. And then of course like I said Silent Hill. Who doesn't love Silent Hill? I love the video games and I thought it was... For the most part, a good adaptation of the survival horror game. But I just, you know, felt like it was like a little bit more they could have done to it. But again, I credit, you know, director uh, Gans or Gaines on what he did with the film. He did what he thought was right. And like I said, the first Silent Hill film was actually good. And then when you got to the sequel, it was just woo. And I wasn't even in the films at that time. And I know how awful that, that Silent Hill was. But all right, guys, that's going to end the video right here. Uh, thank you again for rocking with us for as long as you did. I think we're closing in around 30 minutes here. Let us know what do you think down in the comment section below. What do you think the best video game adaptations are? What are your top three? Make sure you post those down below. Also, in the comment section below, make sure that you also post your own theories and ideas of what would make a good video game adaptation. Um, you can again list off your top three of what you think that they could do to approve upon video game adaptations as well as some of the video game adaptations you would like to see get transferred over that we haven't already seen whether it be a new property an old property or something that you just think needs a reboot because it's been a little while but Andy 13 say goodbye to the people man goodbye people have a good night and uh, I'm going to sleep because I got work in the morning and of course, down in the comment section below, I'll make sure I have a link to his Instagram so you can go follow him at Neospace underscore Cloudian. And of course, you know, you can subscribe right here to the channel. He's a regular guest. So if you want to get in touch with Andy 13, subscribe to the channel here uh, up until he gets his own YouTube channel up and running as well. And of course, subscribe if you like this video, like, comment, and share with your friends. Again, post your thoughts down below. And as I always say, remember to become a savage, stay a savage, and peace out, y'all. Peace out, y'all.